welcome to another episode of the Cinebeards. Today we're going to be looking at our most anticipated movies of 2018. Infinity War. We're done. Cool. See Cheers you guys, guys. Later. Actually, no, there's a shit ton. Mm. I'm your host. They didn't Jason even have Musica. to edit me out of that one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, crap. He's uh, back. Ryan How did he get in? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. This Krabby's is so sweet. Oh, so, so good. Grimes. I'm your host, Jason Musicanth. Hi, Jason. Proud love of Krabby's. I hope they sponsor me Krabby's. Krabby's give, give me us free, free things. Give us, give us Krabby's. <laughs> Just the green I'm, one. I'm here with uh, Marcus Knaif. I'm also here, and I also enjoy a good Krabby. Mm -hmm. And Dion van Heerden. I'm Dion van Heerden, and I have Krabby's. <sighs> okay, so our most anticipated movies of 2018. All right. Okay. My most anticipated okay. movie is the unannounced... Um, but completely shot and edited movie Blade Runner 2049 2. Yes, 2051? No, no. 2049 2. 2. 2. Yeah, the, se the direct sequel, direct which sequel. is already done, completely filmed. At, they actually filmed the back to back for the first one in total secresy. Mm. And oh, it's wow. going to be out tomorrow what's, on the IMAX. What's the basic yes. plot of it? The basic plot of it is. Like, really fucking cool stuff happens, and it's basically just a continuation of the previous one. It literally picks off where the last one ends, and instead yeah. of a sort of a quest, it's more of a getaway movie. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, so instead of Deckard and Kay hunting something, Deckard and his daughter are being hunted. Yeah. And it's, it's just amazing nice. in every way. It continues perfect. It's six hours long. Yeah. Yes. It's scored by Hans Zimmer again. And Howard Scott did a bunch of patches for it. And yeah. And it's perfect. That's my most anticipated film. Oh God, it would be. It really it would, would be. be. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, e oh. It was easily my favorite movie of last year. It was difficultly... One of my three favorite movies yeah. of last year. It was a tough race. I say easily, like yeah, it, no, it won it's, by a hair. Yeah. Shit, yeah. <laughs> it they listen to the other podcasts. They know. <laughs> they yeah. know. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So. All right, but oh, you're talking about actual films that really exist. Yeah. You need to def you need to define these things I'm, ahead of time. I'm sorry. All right. Cool. So, Marcus, what's your most anticipated film of this year? Probably Infinity War. <laughs> Yep, for me, I think it's a close run thing between Infinity War and Black Panther, but Black Panther, I think it's partly just because it's so close. Yeah, you see, I like uh, to, like Black Panther isn't anymore the most anticipated movie for me for the year because mm. it's two weeks out. Yeah, like it, it's, uh, it, it's, it does it doesn't factor anymore. It's the one that's currently like eating up a lot of my hype yeah. overhead be purely because it is just so suddenly so close. Yeah. It feels like just the other day it was still months away. Like Yeah. I can't wait for that. Jason, what's yours? Um well mine's obviously it's a superhero movie. Mm-hmm. It's a sequel. Alright. It's Aquaman. Uh But I knew you were yeah. going there. Yeah. I knew you knew. But no, I'm, 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 are you legitimately looking forward to Aquaman, or is this no, some kind of sick no. joke? I'm not gonna. I'm lie. not. I'm I, not. I, I am like, looking. I'm looking forward to it insofar as it's an excuse for me to go to the IMAX, <laughs> and it's probably gonna sound great. Yeah. Oh, it's probably gonna look amazing too yeah. at some point. And that's yeah. like the actual film. Nah, I don't know anything about it yet. Look, it, it it's secondary. I mean, they they didn't cast a, a lead with a lot of charisma. But isn't it James Wan? Making I it? can't remember who's directing it, because it, didn't it also go through like seventeen directors? Yeah, a whole bunch. Yeah. But I'm pretty no, sure no, James it, Wan at some point yeah, was. Yeah, it is James Wan. Okay. So uh, that alone, and uh, look at you two, uh, that alone gives me some. Because I I really enjoy James Wan. I, I just wish they'd cast somebody with a little bit of screen presence to play. No, I don't know. Aquaman. Have you watched Frontier? The thing is, remember, yeah. a lot Front of a, a lot of a performance is also in the directing and in the writing. Yeah. I mean, um, Jason Momoa plays the lead role in Frontier. It's it's a show. It's a series. It's currently on Netflix. Two seasons of it. Um, it's not a Netflix I'll, original. I'll, I'll check it out because, yeah. like, I watched the Bad Bunch, and he he did not impress there. Mm. Either. No, he plays he play, he plays like. A lumberjack version of what I assume Aquaman's gonna be like, if that makes sense. Yeah. So I, I'm gonna hold up 
it's definitely not got me super hyped. Yeah. It's not like I oh, do I want to see a trailer this, though. But I'm yeah, I'm yeah. I'm I'm extremely curious. I think that's my default position with any uh, DC film at the moment, aside from Wonder Woman two, is just curiosity. Yeah. Yeah. Here's another question, like in terms of films we're looking forward to, all the Disney films we're looking forward to. Yeah. Right. Um, just off the top of our heads, it's going to be. Black Panther, Infinity War, Ant Man and the Wasp, and Solo. Right? Ant Man and the Wasp. It's this year. Yeah, yeah. it's a rom com of Paul Rudd. Yes, <laughs> they are all out by July. Jeez, wow. J wow. Just put that into perspective. Disney is front loading 2018. That is so. What's their like? What's their second half of the year looking like? I don't know. Like, nothing Are they just going big. on holiday? Like, Disney's on holiday. Yeah, I think they're just taking a break. <laughs> <laughs> wow. But, but yeah, that, I, mean, that, that I does, did not realize yeah. Ant-Man and the Wall. Again, it's that well, thing of, like... Jungle Book is like, coming out this year. That's not the Disney one. Is that not the Disney no, one? No, that's the Andy Circus one that was renamed Mowgli. Yeah. Oh, okay. That uh, Jungle Book came out last year. Yeah, no, 2016. Yeah, 2016, yeah. And uh, when's Lion King coming out? Far from now, I believe. I believe that's slated for 2019 at some point. At some okay. point in 2019. Some point in 2019, yeah. So yeah, but that's that's an incredible, incredible lineup. But it does come with its own problems. If you look at the standard cycle of, you know, first trailer to release. Yeah. I mean, we should have already seen a trailer for Solo and Ant Man and the Wasp. When is uh, Ant Man and the Wasp? No, out? I don't. I don't think it's very smart for Isn't Disney Ant -Man not and the to have Wasp released June. It's June or July. But yeah, uh, but remember we just got the Infinity War trailer like a month ago. Yeah, but yeah, that's but, also... but the thing is, they can't they can't release the Ant Man and the Wasp trailer now because it'll like cut a piece of the hype pie that you've got going yeah. for for two Marvel movies already. Yeah, and Solo they couldn't have released the trailer yet because they're still busy with the Last Jedi. Yeah. Yes. So they don't want to dilute. Yeah, but I mean, it's just it's just weird that they're sitting in this sort of problem where technically they should have already released yeah. trailers for these films, that but because sense. they're so close together, they haven't yet. Yeah, it, but it's like what you were just saying before we started recording this with um, with games and Bethesda. If the hype comes so close to the film, there's not enough time for the hype to die down. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, I think they're going to be probably making a couple of thousand. No, dollars. like at least two hundred thousand. Yeah, maybe Jason more than two hundred thousand. <laughs> you guys are idiots. That's a small amount of money. <laughs> Is it? Wasn't that the difference in the takings between Justice League and Batman v Superman? <laughs> no, Jason? only an idiot no, would say that. Are idiots, you? Are you guys? Are out, you? Yeah. Are you guys stupid? Only an idiot would think that. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, it's a can't it's, believe I'm working with you guys. It's, it's a really it's not it, really it's work. a big year. Yeah, it's, nice. it's, it's a big, 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 big year. Yeah. What else is there that's coming out that's not those films? Deadpool two. Deadpool, Deadpool two. two. X Men Dark Phoenix meme. No. Just just sticking I, with comic books. I, I gotta books. say, like, even though the last two X Men films have obviously it's been getting progressively worse, and they they still have Jennifer Lawrence as Mystique, which I is think, she even in Dark Phoenix? Yeah. Because uh, I can't recall the signing yeah, boy. No, uh, their contract was only for three, but they've pretty much all signed on for. <sighs> the thing about Dark Phoenix that that I am happy about is I I really think the actress playing her, playing Jean oh, Grey, Sophie Turner, is really good. Yeah, I disagree. I, no, I, I do not get a Jean Grey vibe from her at all. Jean Grey in the look, the, the, the actress the, the might Jean be good, Grey. but the direction yeah. was not. Yeah. No, no, I no, mean, no, no, no. The thing is, she herself is is a very good actress, and like I, yeah, I fair she, enough. She, the, the obviously like not feeling, but like Jean Grey, I always feel like like Jean Grey is a young adult more than anything, and she sort of she felt more like she was being written as a like a, an older teenager mm. so far. Uh, yeah. The, I don't know. The, like, the, I, do you I know, Marcus? Is, is this going to take like ten, t take place ten years in the future again? Uh, wait, this one is supposed. Would this be in the nineties? Then this one. I, they did say that yes, at, at, at the beginning when they announced it, it was like this is the one that's going into the nineties now. Okay. The, um, the thing that bothers me about it, the the thing that worries me, aside obviously from like the fact that they've been getting progressively worse is 
that it feels like you can't have the heights of the Dark Phoenix story without a fair amount of build up. Mm-hmm. And I don't know how they can reasonably do that in a three act film. Like it feels like it should be it's a kind of thing it should be a two parter. Here's the thing, like like I have read the Dark Phoenix saga mm. at least twice and the only non comic book version that actually did it decently animated was show. the x-men animated show because they had at that point set up the gene gray character mm. so well through a season and a half yeah uh, worth of episodes as the quintessential girl next door goody two shoes you know so, yeah, that, no so the departure actually felt like but the, yeah departure. that's what i was saying it that's why it feels to me like they don't have enough runway no, no. to take off the because only th- they're going the character to do, hasn't been they're going to do the same thing they did in which was it the bad one that had the phoenix in it x3 x x3 had phoenix in it and actually um apocalypse had a little bit of phoenix at the end yeah yeah i'm not counting apart i'm talking about the last time they properly did phoenix x- was in x3. x3 they're just going oh people see the giant firebird that's what they want to see the giant firebird like, uh, but I don't think about I don't, the, I don't you want to see the change in gray. You know what? You know what's a better version it. of the Dark Phoenix storyline? Fucking Greece. I don't think they would <laughs> do it. I don't think they would do it that they would go and take on the same storyline as the worst received X Men film ever if they were just going to do the same thing again. Okay, maybe they would. They but, would, but rationally yeah, but they like, wouldn't. Why would Sony make the same mistake? <laughs> Shit! As, I keep in forgetting. Spider-Man Two after they did yeah. in Spider-Man Three. Yeah. yeah. But but here's the thing: they haven't done enough in this new continuity. They haven't set up the Black Circle Club, like proper. The, sorry, the Hellfire Club. Yeah. Properly. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they mentioned it offhand in First Class, but First Class also sort of now feels out almost feels outside of yeah, the continuity uh, so i watch first class as a self-contained yeah. film it doesn't yeah. feel like it's like the prequel to days of future past no you know what i mean i mean they they haven't set up the hellfire club yeah they haven't characterized this Jean gray yet mm. she's yeah. just a person and like, that's the thing that she I, has no character traits that's the, in the, the thing that i need more of is that's why i feel like it needs to be not necessarily like a two-part like part one and part two but it needs a runway leading into yeah. it it feels like it feels like jumping like like a film going cool let's jump to death of superman yes <laughs> imagine that imagine how bad that would be but then they also decided to throw like doomsday in there or something. let me put it to you another way if Let me put it to you another way, in terms that would also not make sense. Imagine Civil War that we got was the first Avengers movie. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's actually a very good, Mm. very good analogy. So that's good. But but I mean, remember in my like my whole Death of Superman thing. Obviously, you'd also have to throw in a whole bunch of like, you know, Dark Knight stuff and like a lot of Batman, uh, especially CrossFit Batman, which is my favorite of all the comic book iterations he can cross mm. fuck off <laughs> you didn't like bvs <laughs> now you can tell me to fuck off i <laughs> know oh, i yeah no no, no. It, it it feels like a very bad idea no it is but it, it legitimately is i mean i would have preferred do they have is there any sort of change in directors change in writing staff have they done anything since apocalypse no <laughs> as far Who's as i can tell same guy what's his name uh gary gary is it gary something oh wow this this feels exciting brian singer simon kinberg oh he's kinberg directing yeah so they got rid of singer oh but kinberg's like his butt buddy what is kinberg i mean sidekick what did (laughs) i say sidekick i heard that that's what the edit tells me yeah i kinberg is basically singer's sidekick and he hasn't directed anything of note jason um, I'm going into it now. What does Imdb tell us? I'm looking at Imdb. Director, Imdb. one credit. Uh, it's going to be Dark Phoenix. A Hertz commercial Dark Phoenix featuring... Dark production. Yeah. But he has been producer on pretty much all of the X-Men shit. Yeah, that's... that. Okay, that's not promising. I kind yeah. of... I, I, I mean, all of it. Logan, Deadpool, everything. Oh. He's been producer Well, producer is very often just like... Money man. Yeah. 
I mean, yeah. it's like how Brett Ratner's been a producer on a lot of the X Men stuff and some of the DC stuff. Like, yeah. remember he he was a producer on Wonder Woman through Rat Pack Dune. So it's just Kim Book's I was company. Just, I was just hoping against hope that they they'd gone with a more exciting director. Oh, he's also the writer. And I got bad news for you here, guys. He wrote the bad ones too, I know. He wrote Days of Future Past, he wrote Apocalypse, and get this, he wrote Fantastic. I know. Really? Yeah. Well, okay, he's one of, the Any, one of the 17 writers One of the 17, one of the many, many I, writers. I, I was feeling somewhere between uh, a DC film and another film. Like, I wasn't sort of that, like, low expectation, but with a bit of curiosity. Yeah. Um... But I'm down there now. It's, it's, <laughs> it has it now dropped to that point. <laughs> he has been a contributing writer on every X-Men movie, except for X2 and um, the f uh, first, first class. class. No! <laughs> <laughs> you fucking... I was trying so hard to be positive. For once! Look, and this... Logan and Deadpool, he, did, he wasn't a writer. <laughs> we're right on those. So he's a writer on all the bad X-Men yeah. movies. He wasn't a writer on those either. No, he's a writer on all the bad X-Men oh, movies. See? Right. I was trying so hard <laughs> to be positive. Here's a, this, this... Just, a little, just a little balance to all like, of this. I don't, I don't want to be the eternal pessimist here, but I'm pretty sure this is, this is the movie that's going to just legitimately kill mainline X-Men movies. Unless they deliberately do that. Yeah. Like, they're like, cool, this is... The and, 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 and then bring you know them what? into the MCU. I'm yeah. fine with that. Because that means... <laughs> like, at, at the end... You get a fresh start. And, like, and like they're, they're just... They're busy with the final act. And it's all just really bad. And nobody's feeling very invested. And then, like... Um, Captain America just walks in and go goes, Hey, guys, guys, sorry. I know, sorry, big bird thing. Just, just calm down for a moment. Listen, uh, you guys want to come play with us instead? Um, <laughs> no, I want to one-up one that. Phoenix is going crazy in space and you say, Hey, it's hey. me, Korg. Hey, guys. Uh, hey, we're man. leaving on that spaceship over there. <laughs> we're going to the MCU. Uh, would you like to come along? Yeah, this is my we? friend, Meek. <laughs> He's alive again? He's, he may look dead. It's only because he watched your film. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, you're too good at that. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. So yeah, okay. No, I, I was I was coming into this trying to be. I, I like, was like, I'm gonna bring some balance. I'm gonna be like a little positive for once because I'm normally so negative, and now you've just like. <laughs> it's just... Yeah. No, remember being negative on mainline X Men is my shtick. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I was trying to bring much. some balance. even the good ones. <laughs> even the good ones. I was trying to bring some balance. I failed. You were trying to bring balance to, the. The, X -Force. Words, words the, the dialogue around the X-Men films. Yes. That yeah, one. that's as yeah. catchy as something like, say, The Force. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay, well, fuck that then. Yeah, but... I, uh, 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 not Marvel or WB... Well, not Disney yeah, or WB. That's what, that's what I was asking. WB about. produced comic book movie that I am very much looking forward to. Hellboy. Yeah, I wasn't looking forward to it yeah. at first. Yeah. I was very apprehensive at I first. I saw. I was not looking forward to it until I watched Stranger Things. Is that coming yeah. out this year? This year. When? <laughs> I do not know. May sometime, probably. <laughs> just, <laughs> just that's a fair this bit. Year, undefined. Ah, okay. I think. Yeah, I wasn't excited until I watched Stranger Things, and then I was like, "Oh shit!" Now I'm excited. What's that, the actor's name? David Harbour. He's pretty very good. Uh, IMDB actually has it 11th of January 2019. Ah. 2019. So I might have jumped the gun a little bit there. January, though. Yeah, Early that's, January. that's a... That, yeah, that's, that's a like, weird that's release. That's like, that's the graveyard of... Yeah, that's graveyard days. month. Like, that's... I, they'll... They probably just have that as a placeholder for now. Most likely. Probably, yeah. You know what I'm looking forward to? And it just hit me. Isle of Dogs is also coming out this year. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. yeah, it is. The most West anderson This is thing we've yeah, ever seen. Yeah. It's yeah. just so... It's peak Anderson and I'm in love with it. Yep. That's going to be good. If you... if For those of you that don't know, just go Google the trailer for Isle of Dogs and you'll immediately understand. And that's not I Love Dogs. That's Isle like, of, of Dogs. dogs. Yeah. In fact, uh, if uh, Jason I'm... remembers, he'll put a link to some of the movies we mentioned trailers in the description of the podcast. Yeah, it depends how lazy I am, but yeah, sure. 
<laughs> I'll do that. <laughs> uh, I'm up front for you guys. That's also March, though. I love dogs. March. I'll, that's March. I'll nice. Just... That's gonna tie us over between Black Panther and Infinity War. Yeah. Uh, last week we were talking about Venom that was coming out. Mm. Yeah. I I looked at here on IMDb and usually they give you a little uh, plot thingy. Um, uh, for Venom, it just has this plot is unknown. Which I know is IMDb saying they don't know it, no. but also, <laughs> seems rather fitting. <laughs> oh, oh, and, and even another one between Black Panther and Infinity War. Ready Player One. Oh, yes! Whoa. Oh, I'm excited yeah, for that's that. that's also March. That's like end of March. That's now. That's like now. Like, to, all I want from this movie... There's only like one Iron thing I just giant, want, I know this. want, want from this movie, yeah, and we that's know. Iron Giant fighting with Superman. Okay, <laughs> the two of them just together, just him with his hero, is all I want from this movie. <laughs> it's all I want. <sighs> I'm just setting myself up for disappointment. Yeah, you are, you are. <laughs> but I totally understand. <laughs> oh man, that movie still makes me cry to this day. Mm-hmm. Uh, another great thing coming out this year that I'm looking forward to. Also superhero, though not comic book. Incredibles, Incredibles 2. 2. Whoa, it's 2018, guys! <laughs> yeah. it's 2018. All these things that are next year are now this year. Yeah. And there are so many of them that are good things. What is the release oh, date on the, Incredibles 2? Uh, June. Yeah. Yo. That's tough, though, because Dark Souls Remastered is coming onto the Switch at the end of May. Yeah. Uh, Can't they push that on a bit? I mean, there might. Yeah. Oh no! I just remembered. June. Disney does have a movie coming out near the end of the year. November is giving us Wreck It Ralph two. Ralph breaks the internet. Oh, Whoa. an unnecessary sequel for and also, a Disney Pixar movie. And is that Disney also, Pixar? No, no it Disney Pixar. Pixar. Um, it well, I mean, it was a great film. Uh, and also a very, very, very wasted opportunity for the title. What's the title? Wreck It Ralph two. Ralph breaks the internet. Yeah. It's actually all the way around. Ralph breaks the internet. Colon wreck it, Ralph too. That's oh. even worse. Yeah. Okay. Just call it Ralph wrecks the internet. Yeah. Wreck is the fucking verb. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's in his name already. <laughs> it's like when they took that movie Now You See Me and, yeah, and, and, and then the, the, the sequel is Now You See Me Too. Yeah. <laughs> like, who? Now who you was see responsible me. for that? Now You See Me Too. Now You Don't. Oh, like, yeah, Dan easy, Harmon's rant that... on that was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell. Uh, Pacific Rim Uprising is also coming out this year. I don't care anymore because Guillermo del Toro is not involved and I saw the trailer and I hated it. I watched it again. I hate that trailer. Uh, in fairness, like, there, there was just something about the first one. Like, the first one to me felt the way I felt when I watched Expendables 1. Where it was just something that had all this great potential. And then it's like, hey, let's kill off all the interesting giant robots immediately. And then go with a really antique one mm. for 90% of the film. It's like, fuck you. And the, any film that can make Idris Elba look like a bad actor. Fair, and have yeah. like stereotypes and stuff that just makes me want to claw my eyes out. Like, again, like I know it's a very unpopular opinion. You're supposed to love Pacific Rim, but it's just... <laughs> no, well, you're... no, you're supposed to love parts of Pacific Rim. Yes. Oh, is it? Yes. Is it like Sucker Punch? You're not supposed to love parts of Sucker Punch. Oh, is it? Punch. Okay, because I've all I've... You're supposed of... to think, think Sucker Punch is very pretty. Yes. Okay. Because, yeah, no, Pacific Rim, for me, was just such a letdown on so many levels. It's what, like, the, the new Godzilla almost was. Like, where the human aspect... Just almost dragged it down mm. too much. Look, look, the new Godzilla was just heightened to amazingness because of that final battle. Yeah. Yes. No, and also and, and that was something the, that Pacific the, Rim kind of lacked, yeah, I think. Pacific Rim blew its load early. It's like, look at these fucking awesome things. Okay, now they're gone. Now now you only just have the most boring one. Yeah. And and Godzilla built. Yeah, and it built, and it did the super slow reveal. The slow reveal was good. I really Godzilla, liked that. The little bit of him, a little bit more, and then like, and I love the juxtaposition of of that Godzilla, that slow reveal thing, to like the immediate reveal of of Kong. Yeah, in the Kong movie. Yeah, that was, and like the almost casual reveal of Kong. Yeah, I disagree with your Pacific Rim opinions. 
Yeah, but you're an idiot, so. I yeah, I am sometimes, but no, I <laughs> this, I really really enjoyed Pacific Rim for what it was. No, but I, I, mean, for I enjoyed what it, it for was, what it was, but I expected more. From I was going to say, especially with the Guillermo thing is, you can't you can't the, at the you can't take a film like that that hype that expensive that high like super high concept and say for what it was mm. like if if it was sort of a high budget indie film then you can say for what it was what like thor ragnarok yeah <laughs> um but like for what it was you have to sort of reserve for things that that applies to like this was one of my favorite directors with a massive budget with an incredible concept and i managed to walk away from it feeling really annoyed a lot of the mm. time and like that's just like it's it's not good for what it was like it's not good enough like the highs were really high that's mm. it it's not good enough yeah and it, it's something that was could have been so great mm. and it just felt like the the human like the hu direction of the humans but and the it, writing was appalling and i think you nail hit the nail on the head which hadn't occurred to me was that it like all the hype stuff was near the beginning and after that it just kind of it didn't build to something yeah it just kind of petered out and just continued but it, it looks like they've heard some of the criticisms of the new one mm. like it looks like they've got more interesting jaegers actually well, fighting they the, yeah i was gonna say like they had very interesting ones they just had to keep them alive for longer than 15 yeah. seconds yeah it looks like they actually have them fighting i just here, want and it looks I like want they're to... fighting in different circumstances so yeah. they might not all die in the first battle yeah, yeah. i still want the cherno alpha spin-off movie the the russian yeah like, well, yes. the three is no that's that's the, the chinese, the chinese one. one has has the three yeah. pilots the, Look, um, i'm i'm just I, after watching the trailer to uprising who's directing that some journeyman like hired gun director yeah. the thing is Stephen I, I, s de Knight. i yes, would that like guy. a proper sort of action action director doing it yeah i love del toro so much but that to me just felt like such a misfire yeah i will rewatch it because i'm still i'm still sitting with my initial first impressions from years ago uh, years ago yeah um, um well the director um I, I don't know exactly which episode it was but he did do one of the episodes in the first season of daredevil that's cool that's good. Well, I mean, a lot of uh, the, the Hollywood's learning. Like, there's a lot to be gained from getting directors yeah. in from. He's a from TV guy. He produced. Um, he or he was a producer or showrunner on Spartacus: Blood and Sand. They didn't. Uh, oh, that wasn't was Ryan fun, Johnson. Fun didn't Ryan Johnson do several episodes of Breaking Bad? Yeah, he yeah. did. Yes. So I mean, they're they're and I mean, obviously the Russo brothers as well. So yeah, yeah that's cool. Yeah. Other movies. I'm just on the on a list here. That's. That should be worth looking forward to. Um, so after the glut of August or summer is basically over, we get to have a little nice Shane Black sorbet. Ooh, in August. yes! I'm so excited for this one. The Predator. Yeah, I'm so Holy excited. Shit, is that this year? Yeah, yeah this I'm going to say that a lot. <laughs> have you seen uh, the amazing poster for it with the lightning, lightning yes. and the silhouette of the Predator? Oh my god, I'm we'll finding it for you right now. Yeah, Dion. find it for me right now. There's a motion poster version too. It's so hype, and it's just a poster. That. Oh my God! Yes, thank yeah. you, thank yeah. you. Yes, yes, thank you. Yes. Yeah, yeah, and that's coming in August. Nice. Okay. Yep, yeah. yep, yep, yep. Yep. And we're just listing films now that we're really excited. Oh to see. man, I'm so excited for that. Like, actually, 2018 for movies is what last year was for video games to me. Right. I now. know you're going to be excited about this next one. That's just popped in my mind. That's coming this this year, and I'm super fucking excited about. It. I don't know if Dion's going to be as excited if he's seen the first one, Creed Two. Yes. Where 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 he is is fighting. Ivan Drago's son? Yes! I thought you were going to say internal demons. Those two, Those actually. Two. Oh. <laughs> Do we know if Tessa Thompson's back for that? I don't know if she is. I, I will look at it if I can find She was Creed amazing in the first one. Yes, it she is. It turns out a character, Tessa Thompson, putting in a good performance. She, she is in it. Mm. Doesn't, doesn't, sound, doesn't sound plausible. Yeah, but Stallone's directing Creed 2, isn't he? Uh, no, no, no. He's, he's still starring in it, but he's not directing it. It is... Uh, Stephen Capel Jr. Really? I could have sworn Stallone said he was directing Tree 2. I, I, I may have been mistaken. Well, he's hard, he's hard to understand a lot of the time. Yeah, he is. 
I'm just so glad they found a voice actor to properly dub him for the Expendables films. That <laughs> still sounds like Stallone. You know what I mean? Explain. Like because he's in till in intelligible. Yeah. Like they actually dub a lot of his lines. Really? Yeah. Not, so not just him doing ADR. Like they actually have someone. No, they else actually dubbing. have someone to really some of his stuff. That's yes. amazing. That's so. <laughs> I did not know that. That's. <laughs> That's hilarious and also really great. Yeah. I may or may not be lying, but let's just say I'm completely right, as I am in most things in life. <laughs> oh, 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 the, uh, so shall we move on to movies that we're not looking forward to? Yes, please. I know, Dion is very apprehensive about Bohemian Rhapsody. <sighs> I'm just oh, I'm sorry, that sound means he's super excited. I'm just sad. Freddy deserves better. He does. Mm-mm. But um, yeah, we are getting some 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 bad. Well, I don't want to judge movies before they're out. I do, but you know, there's no chance in hell that the Maze Runner: The Death Cure is going to be any good. That was filmed here. Yes, using yeah. pretty much almost every extra that we have to spare. <laughs> yeah, my, both of my sisters were extras on that production. <laughs> Both of our, the, the twins were part of the production as extras. Yeah. Um, now, I, I don't know if I'm looking forward to this or if I'm dreading it. I, I don't know. It's, it's, it's kind of a fine balance at the moment. If it's mediocre, I'm not really looking forward to it. I'm hoping it's going to be Geostorm-like, and that's Rampage. Oh, yeah. Oh, Rampage is just going to be fun. Yeah, Rampage just looks like a, a silly good time. I mean, when you put a line like, I was just thinking we just we're missing a giant crocodile in the trailer. You know what tone they're going for. Yeah. Well, yeah, they cast Dwayne the Rock Johnson. Yeah. And I mean, uh, what's what's his name? Um, Jeffrey Dean Morgan. Oh, you don't know about the thirty foot wolf? <laughs> you don't put those types of things in the trailer if you're yeah. not producing a fun. This campy feels this rock. feels more. This feels like self aware Geostorm. Yeah. Yeah. Which I like. I'm down. Yeah, I'm, d I'm down. I'm down for that. Speaking, Apparently, speaking of uh, self-aware Geostorm, and then taking away the self-aware part, uh, uh, Jurassic World Two. Oh, Jurassic World: Fallen Kingdom. I'm gonna reserve judgment. It's, it's the one with the volcano in it. Yeah, it's one of the. It feels like they've tapped the worst elements of Jurassic World for it, but I'm gonna be. I can't say cautiously optimistic, but I'm gonna like reserve all judgment for now. It's probably I... still gonna make a lot of money. Oh no, yeah. it's, oh, it's, yeah. it's, 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 it's gonna, gonna make... it's gonna be. I mean, like it a is basically movie. yeah, it is basically opening uncontested. Where yeah. is that? When's that? Up? Um, I'll tell you now. The it's uh, f according to the movie insider list that I have, it's the only movie opening on June twenty second mm. that they've got on the list. Yeah. So that means there's no. There will be other films opening the yeah. same day, but no major uh, blockbusters. It's, it's, it's a week after The Incredibles 2, though. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's going to be... Incredibles mm -hmm. 2 is going to have legs. I mean... Yeah, I mean, it's... It's, it's, a, fa it's a family film. It's a, yeah. it, it's a family picture. A family that picture. That actually, I completely forgot what's coming out, and now that is, like, definitely top four anticipated yeah. films. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't yeah, believe, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I've been waiting so fucking long for that movie. No, did, no, I'm, did, I'm very hesitant about Fallen Kingdom, though. Yeah. I like, I, I, I did not like Jurassic World. I liked. I didn't mind Jurassic World. I just thought Jurassic World got. I didn't stupid it as it went. I on. didn't dislike it. I just didn't like it. I still haven't watched Jurassic World. It's definitely oh. worth watching. I, I enjoyed it. Look, it's on Netflix. Look, look, it's it, in it, my queue. I just haven't I, pulled the I, trigger it yet. Just, it, it just needed direction. Yeah, like it. it, it if it had gone with the tone that it set up in the beginning, it would have been fine. And mm. if it had gone with the silly, campy tone that it had in the last, like, 15 minutes, it would have been fine. But the fact that it, it like, ran the gambit of those two... There were a couple the of... Movie. There were definitely two or three things near the end where I wanted to beat my head against the brick wall. Mm. And I think the one thing they could really have done without is the sort of snarky, self-aware, like we're part of pop culture and therefore we're going to have characters in this form actively commenting on our place in uh, pop culture. Like, you're not that clever. Shut the fuck up 
and give me dinosaurs. Oh, you mean like I read about, was it that one IT guy who oh, has like a well, Jurassic yeah. Park t-shirt? He's like, yeah, it's vintage. I bought it on eBay or something. Yeah, shit. And it, which makes no sense. It makes no sense within the war, within the universe. Yeah, it, it was like a terrible disaster. A terrible disaster, and then years later, tons of people went there and died. And, and for then, that, those and then a, on a, eBay. A, a, a dinosaur that they brought back from that killed a lot of people in a city. And he's like, "Yeah, I love this great tragedy. Yeah, I'm gonna wear a T-shirt was, was to the, commemorate the, the tragedy." Thing. That's that's like people unironically wearing like 911 is my birthday T-shirt. Yeah, you yeah. know what I mean. Yeah. 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 The, uh, I mean, honestly, not that think, bad, but like, I think, yeah. I think I enjoyed the film probably more than you did. I like the sort of, the the things that I thought were going to bug me, the kids. Because uh, that's a fine line to walk, you know, like, even, uh, I mean, even... Even in movies, Even, like, the, the master, even the, the master of that Spielberg, like, dropped the ball at times, you know? So, that's always a thin line. And I felt, I felt that that, you know, like, the, the sort of, the thing with their parents' divorce. Not, I thought it was sort of as solid as that kind of thing can be. And I like Chris Pratt. Um, I enjoyed his character. He, but it, but he it, was it, pushing me in that but movie. It got, but it got stupider as it went on. And uh, I think also, I've only seen oh, it, it once. It reached peak I've, stupid at the end. I've only seen it once. The one thing that worried me from the trailer was the idea of him randomly having raptors as allies. And I thought they handled that as well as that concept could have been handled it didn't like it didn't piss me off what did piss me off was freaking fisk what's his name the actor oh yeah vincent d'onofrio like what yeah. was he doing there and why was right? that so yeah. terrible like why the fuck was he in jurassic world he was in jurassic world as like a military yeah, guy he wanted they to want... harness dinosaurs for military power. for military purposes and that that is where I draw the fucking line. You just strap nukes to velociraptors and have them run that terrorist. No, no, you shoot laser nukes. Gatling guns. Imagine this. Gatling guns, but they fire lasers. Isn't that Stop a cool original thought? Stop trying to bring lasers into sci-fi. <laughs> um, Marcus's this thing. <laughs> it's his thing. It's his shtick. It's crazy, <laughs> it's his <shtick>. character, <laughs> crazy character quirk so that he has. These neon lasers. <laughs> Jason, they can't turn Jurassic World into dino riders, okay? That for Not me. with that attitude. <laughs> Aside from the, 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 the two really, you know, like the really stupid things near the end. I don't want to give spoilers for Marcus here. No, spoil away. Oh, okay. The two, two, obviously the woman running from the T-Rex. Like bringing the T-Rex in. He's seen the running from yeah. the T-Rex. Bring the T-Rex yes. in as the hero. I thought uh, was stupid. No, no. That was pushing and it. And the freaking, the, that random thing where the giant fish, the waterborne dinosaur jumps out of its tank and eats the dinosaur. The, at the, the abominable end. Rex. Yeah. <laughs> like it just sort of, it just flops out. It's like, that is a huge safety oversight. That is A, a huge safety oversight. And B, like, what was with the um, T Rex Velociraptor buddy cops? Yeah, like that's what like, got... like they they teamed up to defeat this because this they had Rex. some they had some shared gene. And then, and then they looked at each other at the end and they gave a little nod. <laughs> they, gave, they gave they gave a little a little Return of the Jedi nod. Mm. And the then stuff, went on their the ways. The stuff that I really liked about it that I felt cool was sort of. The, the the sort of the adventure aspects of it and the hiding from the dinosaurs and the running like that the all, Jurassic yeah park the, stuff. the Jurassic Park stuff like the stuff that if I was a kid watching it it would be sort of formative but it just felt like they also tr they were also very conscious that a lot of their fans would be snarky ironic Jaded. thirty something yeah thirty somethings and they tried to pander to them but yeah the military stuff is where I draw the line. That is stupid as fuck. It is. And the thing Why is, would you try and like try the and thing is, use dinosaurs as part of the military? Like, you have better delivery systems for nukes. They're called jets. Look, the, the or submarines, you know, submarine or anything other than. But the thing animals. is, that's what I'm saying. They 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 didn't stick to a toe. Yeah. If they had gone full silly, I could have gotten behind dinosaur military. Mm. If they had leaned into the fact that it's just absolutely ridiculous. But they tried to make it seem serious. Mm. And I you think... can't try to make it seem serious where a T-Rex and a Velociraptor are like, yeah, well done, buddy. We work together. Good on you. I, I enjoyed it almost the same way that I enjoyed Justice League. 
in that I enjoyed it as a, a visceral experience, acknowledging faults as I went along, but still had a good time. Yeah. But would not necessarily want to watch it too many times. Jurassic World, I've never watched again. Yeah. So I enjoyed that first viewing and had fun with it and left it there. Whereas yeah. something like Jurassic Park and Lost World, I've watched. Even Lost World, which I know people don't like as much, I've watched so many times. Yeah, I honestly don't want to watch Justice League again because I enjoyed it less the second time yeah. I watched it. Diminishing Returns, whereas um, something like The Last Jedi... <laughs> oh, it gets I'm better on, with every I, Yeah, with every viewing it gets better. I, I watched the first time, I loved it. Second time I loved it more. Third time I liked it as much. And then I took a two-week break and went back and my fourth viewing was the best. Yep. Mine's pretty much, I, 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 pretty much the same if I, I, if I recall correctly, didn't I message you guys directly? Because I had given it a week between yeah, the Yeah, and hearings. you said it's better. Yeah, yeah, like the first thing I said here is that it's definitely better the second time. Yeah. yeah. And if you don't agree with that opinion, you're free to unsubscribe. We don't care. Yeah, we draw the line there. We don't there. care. Yeah, we draw we the line there. We don't care. <laughs> you can go watch your... your what the, Batman v Supermans. Oh, oh, the kids with their Batman v Supermans and their raps. Their raps and their Batman v Supermans. Mm. Or like that. Fence of Jewish stereotypes. Right? Terrible people. An interesting. A movie that I'm looking forward to seeing this year, but possibly not for all the right reasons. It might just be out of morbid curiosity. Is Alita Battle Angel. Go on. Okay, so it is a film based on an anime, right? And they released the trailer and people freaked out because of the big eyes on the main character. She's some kind of cyborg and they actually, in the trailer, gave her like big anime eyes and people like, that looks so weird, right? I'm gonna see if I can find a still this of is, that. That the, looks this, pretty this, weird. This film adaptation of the anime isn't close enough to the anime. This whole adaptation of the anime is too yeah. close to the anime. It sounds like... I mean, you'll see um, it, but, but here's why I'm interested in this movie. Yeah. It's the people behind it. The screenplay, right? Oh, wow, yeah. Now, that's weird, man. Let me see. That, it, it looks pretty weird. Jason will put links to a picture on the podcast description again, right? It looks odd, right? It looks strange, but it's also strangely compelling. Yeah. 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 But, but here, here's why I want to watch this movie. I'll take it. It was the screenplay was written by, among others, <laughs> James Cameron. What? Huh? Yes. Okay. Right. And it's being directed by Robert Rodriguez. What? Yes. What? Okay. I'm okay. No. So yeah. okay. <laughs> every little bit hook of line, like no, hook line so, and sinker. No, I'm there. I'm caught. Right. Launch day. I'm there. Like. Here's the thing. Launch day. Like, Launch yeah. day. Yeah. I was like waiting for the. Here's the thing. Like drop. we can we can watch the we can watch a trailer post 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 recording so you guys can yeah. see it. No, it's fine. They've already got my money. I just eat. But you know, the, <laughs> <laughs> it looks weird, but at the same time, I've never been disappointed by a Rodriguez project. Yeah. You know, it, it's always been good. Even Spy Kids. Ah, uh -uh. Spy Kids is legitimately good. I've yeah. watched that with my nephews and my is it, niece. I haven't seen it. That's yeah, no, why they I are legitimate. It's upwards infection and of the, the thing is, And their, their uncle is Machete. Yes. And Robert Rodriguez has confirmed that that is Machete. It's from, actual Canon it's actual Machete. Canon, Canon machete. machete. That is amazing. It is. Those are properly oh, that's good. Yeah. That's good. Well, the, Spy Kids 3D went a little bit I didn't, weird. I didn't watch 3D. I watched yeah. 1 and 2, I think. Yeah, 3D had the is the one with um, Sylvester Stallone as the villain, as multiples that. of himself. No, 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 no. It's it's properly good. It's definitely, obviously, aimed at sort it's of aimed at children. children. Well, yeah, but it, he did but it for his kids, if yeah, I but remember it is, correctly. But it's yeah. properly... It's yeah. a there are a movie. lot worse movies, live-action movies, you could show to your kids, let me yeah. tell you. Okay. And it's a good introduction to Machete. Yes. <laughs> machete. <laughs> I mean, I even I, I'm, I'm <laughs> still waiting for Machete in space. Me too. But I think Machete, the, the second one, bombed really hard. It did. But here's the thing. Like, Rodriguez, like, as a creative, doesn't care. Yeah. He'll still make Machete Kills again in space. The thing is, it's, it's, just, it's he's, a question of funding. It's just a question of funding for him. Like, but because remember, he also recently launched a television network in the States. Really? Yeah, El Rey Networks. Yeah. It's basically focused 
on the mix the mexican american audience mm. like it shows uh it, it's uh, except for its original programming which one of them is a series version of from dust till dawn which is actually oh, yeah. pretty damn good oh th- did he start this a while ago then Cause... yeah yeah this was a while ago because i watched a couple of years ago i watched the uh, ser- the series version yeah. of from dust i'm just till talking dawn. like in between like machete kills mm. which was already a good couple of years ago and you know it's and apparently it's doing pretty well mm. you know financially so maybe he would be able to fund machete yeah. kills again oh soon. i hope so i oh, really, I hope really so. do that's just it's just so good i, I love those movies. A laser machete have you watched the have you watched the version of machete um where the they have audio instead of a director's commentary they have the audio of the audience from the premiere i think that's one of my dvd extras i haven't yeah, yeah, watched that, it yet. it's one of the extras no so you can actually watch it with the audio of like the actual premiere so like you know as soon as anyone like new pops up on the screen like everyone's cheering and everyone's laughing at the joke oh that's it's like, good yeah it's it's really really cool that's really yeah. good really right, good man. idea yeah. yeah so that's why i'm like actually interested in elite battle angel because of the people no no, no like it. you've sold it you've sold it to us. Yeah, they I, can pay I'm you sold. your commission now yeah you, your job's done i'll cash that check <laughs> Catch Disney's going to be angry that you're promoting other movies. <laughs> well, it's a non-exclusive deal that they signed with Yeah. <laughs> it's Disney. They don't sign those. Uh, that's true. Uh, oh, fuck. We're in big trouble. We are. But anyway, other than that, like, I can't the, really see... Well, there's Fantastic Beasts and the Crimes of Johnny Depp. Uh, there's Fantastic Beasts and Where Do They Can Go Fuck Themselves. <laughs> Yeah, I just, I, just it, <laughs> yeah. I just thought it. I just thought it was Fantastic Beasts, the one you're not going to watch. That's the thing is, like the first one, I gave it, I gave it its due. I'm not like a big Harry Potter fan, but my wife is. You're not a pothead, as yeah. they say. Uh, and um, <laughs> and I, I went to watch it, and it was a resounding like, meh. There was like, there were some cool characters, and like, give it its due, but overall, just really like, meh. Like if if it really if it What's wasn't a film thing? that was tying into the whole Harry Potter universe and on that existing fan base, it would have just bombed so hard. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, and I, I can't, uh, the thing is for me, the absolute worst part of that entire film, and there were a couple of real low moments, the absolute worst part was the reveal, was the, of, was the reveal of Johnny Depp where I almost walked out of the cinema and I don't do that. I oh. I was just like fuck this. This was it was like you turning to me doing Batman v Superman. Like fuck this movie. Yeah. Why would why would you get rid of Colin Farrell for Johnny Depp? Why? Nobody I mean, in the well, world. When they were writing that, like we've been over this. When that movie first entered production, I'm it was the right choice. No, it wasn't. It go. No. If, okay. Oh, what well, did the film enter production in the late nineties? Yes. <laughs> yes. No. 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 But like. <laughs> no, it didn't. That's it, was, only... it was it was before Anywhere... the last pirates bombed so horrendously. No, but the thing is, if, if that it was, was worse than Farrell long before that, I was gonna say like if it was anything after the first pirates film, it's a bad choice, and nobody will if be it was more anything excited after to see In him. Bruges. It was a yeah. bad choice. <laughs> yeah, and that, really, and just the design of the character looks so oh shit. God. As we mentioned last time, it looks like his best friend's the Jared Leto Joker. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, oh no that movie is uh, god Ugh. hey maybe they, i mean they have to make seven of those things so maybe they've learned their lesson and made it not bad i'm just i, I mm, mm. i'm just gonna check something here because... if they had learned their lesson they would have been like okay this guy's shown to be a shape changer before let's recast the motherfucker <laughs> <laughs> i mean they could do that no, they've stood. They're all standing. Yeah, they're standing right. The even, uh, even uh, J.K. I think what bugs me is that they're all standing by the casting because of like the allegations of you know domestic violence stuff, and they're like, well, you know, it's turned out this way. It's like that's not my issue. That's an issue, but it's not my issue. My no. issue is it's shit, and he looks shit, and he's not good, and he's managed to make he managed to make a film which was already bad somehow worse. Yeah, exactly. Dude. Sorry, I am just. Quickly, looking at my phone, because there's another source of films, obviously, coming this year, and we start have to have to start taking them seriously. It's the Netflix Originals release. Oh, yeah. Uh, just, just before we go to the Netflix Originals, um, there yeah. is a movie coming out this year that's a sequel to a Villeneuve movie. 
Yep. So, so not directed. I saw Blade Runner 2049 too. No, no, no. Um, Blade Runner 2049 2, Soldado. Yeah. <laughs> Sicario 2, Soldado. Oh, yeah? Yeah, the first, one, the, first, the first one was really, really good. It was, like, properly good. Yeah. So, I'm, I'm excited for the second one. It's a different director, but it's... I, I think it's still good hands, and yeah. I'm still excited for cool. it. Mm. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, these Netflix movies. You so, mark yeah, as no, master no, there's of a, streaming. There's a, there is... Yeah. Okay, so I'll start off with the big one that's coming this year to Netflix. So... I mean, we all like that Martin Scorsese guy, right? He's oh, like, Martin right? Scorsese. Right? Yeah. Marcus, yeah, Martin, Marcus yeah. Marcus Marcus Scorsese. Marcus <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, um, that movie he's been trying to make for years and oh, years. Oh, shame. That little independent filmmaker. Yeah. He, he probably yeah. got some B-list, C-list actors in yeah, there. Yeah, I well. mean, so, you know, Netflix finally ponied up a little bit of money for him to make this little passion project. Rent a camera. <laughs> Rent some lights. You know, with uh, these... A GoPro. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I haven't even heard of these people. Al Pacino. Al Pacino. Oh, it's another diversity. Ro oh, Al Pacino. Rubier De Niro. I think uh, that's how I think, you pronounce I think it. That's, yeah, Rubiro De Niro. Yeah. 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 Uh, the Irishman. That's coming to Netflix this year. For those of you that don't know, and without being facetious, it's... <laughs> <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> it's a it's the gangster movie he's always wanted to make focused on think of it uh, like Goodfellas, you know, the rise and fall of a gangster but it's literally told over decades. The sounds incredible. It's it's peak Scorsese. I can't wait to stream. The only thing that annoys me is like there there is no satisfying financial transaction that happens i sound like such a consumer whore, right but it, yeah, but yeah, yeah, but yeah. Like, but I can't you like, don't get to throw money at the like, screen like, or anything that's such a great idea and i respect netflix so much for making that happen and it just seems like such a perfect storm of glory and it's just like i can't throw money at it there's just a debit order that goes off each month Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the thing is, I want that to debit reward order, them that, for what they've done. Yeah, and the thing is, that debit order doesn't go directly to them. It's not like here, my yeah. money voted for you. It's like, oh, you got a view, but like, it doesn't feel like as much of a contribution from me if I'm just giving you a view. Like, I just want to, I, I, I will just stream it every day for a few months. <laughs> just stream it in the background so yeah. they know it's appreciated. <laughs> like they actually. Like in January, they called out someone. Yeah. Well, did you see that? Where someone was watching some, like, I think it was The Prince the something. They watched it like 23 times in 23 days. Wasn't it a B movie that somebody watched? Like, that was, was one of the one other ones. Every now and then they call people high. Yeah, it was like, 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 to the person who watched you know, this movie 23 times in 23 days, who hurt you? <laughs> <laughs> like, shit like that. That's just great. Um, a TV series that's coming out, actually. A sequel series to one of my favorite Jim Henson movies. Yeah. The Dark Crystal, The Age of Resistance. Yeah? Yeah. What? So. Elaborate? So, I'm just going to read the plot synopsis here quickly. It's pronounced elaborate. Elaborate. <laughs> the Elaborate. Dark, the Dark Crystal, Age of Resistance. I'm not completely sold on the name, but whatever. That's fine. Returns to the world of Thra, where three Gelfling discover the horrifying secret behind the Skeksis power and set out to ignite the fires of rebellion. This just sounds like world. that that um that Brooklyn Nine Nine parody <laughs> oh, of yeah. fantasy writer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but uh, mm -hmm. but uh, but I'm deeply excited yeah, about what I mean you're that's saying. I mean that's why Netflix is good. Yeah. I mean they would green light basically I mean, that's and I'm glad that they're bringing Jim Henson out of retirement good. slash death. Yeah. Speaking of Netflix being good, you guys watch you guys both watched Bright. Yeah, right? I did. What, Bright, did. what did you think? Bright, like... I felt, was deeply let down by its script. Yes. Uh, and I also thought so. Bright would have worked far better. When I started watching it, I didn't realize it was a self-contained film. You thought it was a series. I just saw Bright, I clicked play. Um, and I thought I was watching a lengthy pilot to a series. Ah. Yes. When I started. Yes. And then at one point I realized like, oh, this has been going on a while. And I looked like I've been watching for an hour and a bit and it's two hours long. And then I looked it up. Oh, it's a film. And it's getting slagged off. So I feel it should have been a series. Obviously, yeah. it's hard to pin someone like uh, Will Smith. I almost said Will Farrell. Will Smith down for something like that. Uh, but I felt he was the best I've seen him in a long time. Right. Put a pin in the Will Farrell thing. I'm going to come back to that later. You remind uh, me of a movie. Yeah. yeah. So I felt Will Smith was the best I've seen him in a long time. I really enjoyed The Orc. 
I like yeah, that. It was actually a good performance by Will Smith. Yeah. yeah. Where was he wasn't proper, just playing he Will Smith. He was properly acting. Yes, I felt I don't, yeah, I, the, 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 the weak link, and he's the, the, it's the weak link that is actually being replaced for the sequel. Was the writer. Was the writer. Who apparently sold that script for over $3 million. But he's, a, he's apparently, his brother, I think, is, a, is some... No, 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 his, his father. Oh, his father. Anyway, some, there's some... There's some deep nepotism. He's apparently just made a string of mediocre films. Um, he also wrote... Um, this is Max Vic Landis, yeah? Yeah, he wrote Victor Frankenstein. Um, well, he wrote um, the, 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 the thing with the four, the Kids of the Powers. Chronicle. Chronicle, that's it. So I think... I think if they they have a better writer who can treat the subject matter with a bit more no I mean I know when I when I watch a view about it I say you know uh, it's a little a, a little heavy-handed ha 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 because yeah. it is it was very heavy-handed like this is a guy that just learned what metaphors were and he didn't realize that other people also know what they are Yeah and, like like we understand um but that aside like it's a world that I would really like to revisit and that I would like to have treated because it's such a cool it's a easy it's a simple concept yeah but, i've played the video game it's shadow run <laughs> yeah it is but, Shadowrun. but it but i but it's it's such a cool concept this idea of you know the elves and the orcs and the humans yeah, no, and it's what, a fantastic what I like, concept and a fantastic like was, world i have it was to, a great world it was just a very paint by numbers yeah, story mm. yeah i i really apparently it's training day or something like that like which i haven't seen but i've seen yeah. a lot of people saying you should see it yeah, I, you I should. See, Training I've heard Day a lot is of people... also on Netflix, actually. Yeah. Oh, nice. Hey, I'm on Netflix now, too, so. Um, but oh, a big ups to the score, because they nailed that sort of, that they organically managed to do sort of gritty inner city cop drama with action fantasy. with the fantasy mm, stuff, yeah. which I felt they nailed. So I think, even though Bright itself is imperfect, I enjoyed the first half more than the second half. Because yeah. of what I thought I was watching, mm. which was like, this is the start of a really cool, high-budget series. Yeah. Um, but I think oh, it that... It so well as a series. Yeah. But I think that this I'm, I am excited for the sequel, despite how yeah. bad Look, the reviews the for thing. the first one were. Here's yeah. the thing. Like, the world exists now. Yeah. Netflix does own, as far as I understand... They own the rights to yeah. the world yeah. as it was written. Now they can actually write interesting stories. And they can get a team together and write a spin-off series. It doesn't even have to be LA. It can be a New York drama yeah. Yeah. where, you know, instead of elves in Beverly Elf Hills, you know, East Manhattan and all the bankers or whatever are just a bunch of dwarves or something. Yeah, that's yeah. very racist, but yeah. Um, um, not if you're basing it on Shadowrun, <laughs> which but, they clearly uh, are. Yeah, the uh, I I'm very happy to hear that they're doing the sequel, that they're keeping the cast, they're keeping that they're keeping everything that was good, and they're just scrapping the writer and mm. replacing the writer with someone better. That yeah. for me is a good sign that Netflix are listening. Yeah, yeah. I did well, enjoy Max watching Landis, it though. Yeah, he he did write a run of. Um, of superman comics called american mm. alien yeah and that was were, good th those were good mm. those were good not nearly so heavy-handed mm. uh, yeah this really felt like he just learned what metaphors are and he, he couldn't wait to use them yeah. dion i am going to excite you because technically blade runner 2049 2 is coming out oh, is oh it yes be director's that, that cut or um what? no 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 called again there's ah. a series coming to netflix it looks very exciting Oh, we'll exciting. show you the trailer altered carbon it's the quickest way to describe it is it's a blade runner tv series jesus christ <laughs> it's, it's basically people are immortal because their consciousnesses are like essentially cycled through mm -hmm. flesh bags yeah and, oh shit son and you can and this guy's brain put into oh well, you'll see in the trailer you'll yeah. see yeah, the trailer yeah, yeah. but it 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 is it looks very cool. beautiful like it's got that it's got that same sort of look that Blade Runner 2049 had. The sort of oppressive, noir, cyberpunk. It's... Oh. Oh. Um, I just want to... You see the thing that I that I linked you guys about the series? The series. The uh, Continental. Uh, uh, yeah, yes. Yeah. That... Yeah. Yeah, uh, because what did we say when we were busy watching... John Wick 2. We want to know more, more about what the a Continental. Great world. I want to see more of this. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'm excited for that. I'm just going to quickly just... Pull the pin on that Will Ferrell thing. Yeah. Mm, pull that pin. 
Um, like a grenade. Will Ferrell and John C. Riley are going to be in a movie called Holmes and Watson. That yes, sounds amazing. Yes, I have, but I've, yeah. I've been reading about that for quite a while. I've also been reading about another film where they're border patrol. Like, where they're, they're border guards. That's going to be subtle. Yeah. So, uh, I'm, I am I just really want Will Ferrell to have a be winner again. again. Yeah. Like, he's been in just some absolutely appalling films. Oh, there's Daddy's Homes. No, I haven't watched them. I refuse to watch them. I mean, every now and then I'll pull out and I'll just say, okay, tonight I'm watching, Anch- like, the extended versions of Anchorman, Talladega Nights, and the other guys. And I watch it and I just think, how do people, and obviously Step Brothers yeah. if I have time, how do people manage to keep giving this guy such mediocre films to work in? I don't yeah, know. I, it's so sad. I'm, I'm just really hoping for another feral one. Okay. I, I when, I, he, I, I when Wolf, he's good, Wolf, he's really good. Well, okay, can I, can I, sorry, can I blow your minds right now about a series... <sighs> Always. That's coming to Netflix this year as well. Yeah. A remake of Watership Down. Right? Yeah. Go so, on. So, you know, if, for those of you that don't know, shut up. Go Google Watership Down because it probably traumatized your childhood as it did ours. Yeah. But just to give you an idea of who's in the voice cast for this revival. So, you've got John Boyega in there. Uh-huh. Nicholas Holt. Uh-huh. Daniel Kaluuya, Kaluuya. Yeah. Who was uh in Get Out, remember the mm-hmm. main character? Um let's see. James McAvoy is there. Mm-hmm. Uh Ben Kingsley is there. Mm-hmm. Uh who else Jeez. is there? Just wow. like Wow, that is a star-studded cast. Yeah, there's a lot of like British people in this show that they're making. Voice acting. Mm. Yeah. The thing is I I often feel I feel so torn when I hear casts like that for voice, voice acting. acting because they're all great and they're all going to sell well and some of them are going to do very well. But I f- always feel like I would be more excited to see proper vo- voice Because it's actors. such a different discipline. Mm. Yeah. Um, so all of those are exciting. But someone like, say, John Boyega, who I really enjoy in Star Wars, I am not convinced by him as a voice actor. No. Yeah. Uh, Look, if we're looking at voice actors, there are four that stand out for me. Five. Yeah, four or five that 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 stand out for me and always stand out for me. But that, that I don't know if it's because of nostalgia or, or anything mm. like that. And that's essentially just the cast of the Batman animated series, mm. and then um, Nolan North and what's that other guy is always in the video games. Troy okay. Baker. There yeah. we go. That's his name, Troy Baker. Yeah, I, I mean, there's also, there's a lot of, like, good staple Hollywood animated film voice actors. But, I mean, that's their discipline. And I mm. think that discipline is dying slowly because animated films more and more are saying, okay, cool. We need so, celebrity names. So, which character it. will we have Seth Rogen play? Yeah. And that's how you get Beyonce as Nala. Well, to be fair, I'm fine with that because Nala does have to sing and Beyonce does have a singing voice. Yeah, that that is true, but singing isn't all that the character is. No, no, fair mm. point, but singing is a large part of it. Yeah, so yeah. it's a... Um, hey, it is maybe, eventually, maybe she, it is essentially a musical. Maybe she blew it out of the park with, um, with her audition, audition or something. Yeah. In fairness, Disney is the one company, like, I'm deeply skeptical, as I said during the other podcast, of their casting of Timon and Pumbaa. Yeah, yes. massively skeptical, but again, Disney isn't Disney because they make bad decisions with voice casting. So you don't know. Yep. What, is, what does Disney know about animated things? They just make superhero movies, Dion. <laughs> and a Fuck. Star Wars every now and then. Yeah. <laughs> so here that Star Wars guy is pretty cool though with yeah. his laser sword. There, hey, uh, no, I can't. There aren't many like standout movies announced yet coming to netflix but netflix also does this thing where they're like oh yeah we we kind of made this movie you'll watch it next month yeah they're prone to do that uh one of the things that has been uh well it's also a series that's also been announced is the adaptation of the witcher they're making a series out of that 
And from everything I've read, it sounds like it might actually do really well. How did they... Because they're basing uh, it on the I, which, which wooden plank did they get to play, Geralt? I don't know yet. Like, I mean, how do you find a plank w with abs like that? You know? Um, it's the easiest thing in the world. It's Jason Momoa. No, no, no. I'm talking about a literal plank. It's Jason Momoa. No, no. A literal plank. Jason Momoa? No, Jason Momoa is a fence. Oh. Idiot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, I'm 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 no fan like of of Gerald as a, a protagonist. It's like it's yeah. just it's a charisma black Look, hole. It, I I just hope Netflix gives me another Bong Joon Ho movie. I will be happy. Oh, probably, I, think, I think with, with, with Witcher one. they are being smart though, and I'm not saying I'm not excited about it. It's just that I, I think they're being smart because they know there's going to be a void when Game of Thrones is gone. Yeah. Well, that's also why Amazon is fast-tracking their Lord of the Rings yeah. series. Yep. That is something that I'm properly excited about. Just because they have so much money to throw at these yeah. things. Also, oh, Jeff Bezos, nice. if you're listening, because, you know, you own Amazon, you've got money to, like, throw at Lord of the Rings. How about you throw us a couple of thousand dollars? Just we'll promote it for you. We'll promote it for you. We'll tell you know? we'll tell at least three people about it. Yeah. I'm a fan of the Lord of the Rings. He's a great guy. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that's Sauron's it. a stand-up guy. Yeah, I that's, his yeah. name, that's his name, Saul Ron. That, that yeah. part in the game where you find out that you were the Lord of the Rings all along. <laughs> it's just, yeah, it's... The, the whole move the whole, the whole game they're calling you mr rings yeah and the yeah. whole time they're saying you know would you kindly take the ring to mordor <laughs> and there's that great twist yeah and then eventually and they just call you by your first name <laughs> the <laughs> oh god no but yeah. wake up the <laughs> man okay yeah no there are good things coming out this year yeah, that yeah. i am very this is much a excited crazy for year for film and series and games yeah yeah a lot of escapism yeah hopefully 2018 will be shit enough for us to have time to escape with all these great things coming out yes mm. there'll be plenty we want to escape from yes all right my that recommendation nuclear war my recommendation for this week is actually a movie that's released in the states but not released here yet the shape of water yes i like, I haven't seen it as of the recording. I will have seen it by the time this comes out. I am excited. Yes. I am very As excited. well you should be. Yes, I'm also... Okay. The wife and I are also very much looking forward to Shape of Water. We'll probably watch it the same weekend you do. Yeah. We at will... some point. Have well, last year... Thing? Yeah, last year... Uh, last year. Last week, I recommended it. Uh, something else, also, a movie you may have heard of, came ar out around the same time. Um, on Blu-ray in the US, uh, it's uh, Blade Runner. I think it's an ice skating film, Blade Runner twenty forty nine. Oh, isn't that that Tonya Harding thing? Yeah, yeah, I think it's that. Mm. I think it's that that docu docu drama thing. No, um, Margot Robbie's in it. She's hot. Yeah, and Harrison Ford. <laughs> He's hot. Yeah. cosplaying as that as as like a sci fi cop. Um, oh, Deckard Kane. <laughs> that's the from one. Diablo. <laughs> yeah, this movie sounds amazing. <laughs> so yeah, uh, yeah, uh, that's coming. That's uh, that's out on Blu-ray now. So you know, you might want to pick it up if you want. I don't some, know. Some it doesn't sound like my favorite movie from last year. <laughs> <laughs> Marcus Strowman's. Oh, uh, from from my side, I just want to make sure I get it, get the name right. It is an. Yes, it is a film coming to Netflix. On the 17th, so in the past when this comes out, it should be there. It's an animated film that I am very excited for. It's an animated Godzilla film. Oh, Ooh. yes. Monster. World, World of Monsters? Monster World? Go Godzilla, Planet of the there Monsters. <laughs> Planet of the Earth. No. <laughs> it's a, yeah, it's a CG, like, just, it's a cg animated godzilla movie in the godzilla tradition so it's godzilla fighting a bunch of other monsters like i've seen the trailer i'll show it to you guys okay now. but what's the hook godzilla fighting more monsters what oh okay yeah no then i'm sold yeah <laughs> it's probably very entertaining yeah but that sounds amazing also just as a, a little heads up uh as netflix greenlit young justice season three 
Yes! Uh, we, we know about that. That's in production. They just added the first two seasons to our Netflix here in South Africa. Oh, go watch it right now. Yeah, right I, now, go watch I it. watched the pilot as well. It still holds up, so okay, go enjoy that. I will. What is that? Young Justice. Young Justice. What is that? A superhero thing focusing on the essentially the sidekicks of the main Justice League members, but it is it, it is almost Diniverse levels of good. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So you've got Robin. Aqualad and Artemis. Uh, who else? Artemis and Miss Martian and like all the sidekicks like they are basically learning uh, to be superhero. learning to be the Justice League effectively. Nice. Because they are already no, trained as superheroes. Yeah. They're just not trained to work as a team. Yeah, they're learning to be independent from their their, their own heroes. Their respective yeah. heroes. Awesome. It's good stuff. Nice. It is very good stuff. I'll go check it out. Yeah. All right. Plugs, Dion. You can follow me on Twitter, where I will never tweet at you, at Dion from Hidden One. Marcus. Go to my YouTube channel, Escape from Mount Backlog. I play video games. Also, you, also Twitter, Facebook, all of those things. Um, I don't know what date this is going out, but prob I'm probably doing Fury this Friday, so tune in for that. And next month, We'll be focusing on games with female protagonists because it's February and female protagonist February sort of has an alliteration thing going. Yeah, you can follow me at, at @jmusicanth on Twitter. I, I much like Dion, I'm not going to tweet at you, so you don't have to worry about that kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> Trying any funny business? No, 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 no funny tweeting business. It's not what it's for. No. Nope. Uh, you can follow us at Cinebeards, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube. Sweet. All Ooh. right. Go drink some crabbies. crabbies. Yeah. <laughs>